If you miss the Paula White Ministries Prayer Summit, now is your chance to capture it on CD or DVD. This invaluable resource is available right now for your family and your ministry. Speakers include Pastor Paula White. We should be the leading thinkers. Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. Is there any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Pastor Kibi Otu and many more. You will not only learn the true power of prayer, but also teachings on apostolic ministry, vision, the supernatural, seasons, intercession, legacy, and so much more. Call, write, or go online right now. And for your ministry gift of $35 or more, we'll rush you the Prayer Summit series on five CDs. Or for your ministry gift of $40 or more, five DVDs. Don't miss this opportunity to get these life-changing messages by some of today's leading generals in the body of Christ. Prayer works. Order today. If you're ready for your life to be radically changed, prayer is the key. It is the vehicle that moves the mountain. Nothing happens in the earth realm without prayer. That's why John Wesley said, it seems as if God's limited. He has no limitations, we know that. But he says it seems as if he is. That God does nothing unless someone asks for it. When we begin to pray, when we begin to open our mouth with the word of God and understand the legal jurisdiction, how to, what I call technically through the word of God, through covenant, legalities, pray effectively, then everything begins to shift. That's how we superimpose the kingdom of God. That's how we manifest God's promise. That's how we see heaven come to pass in earth. Thy will be done in earth. It means a forced compliance. I want to teach you through our prayer for summit because so many people have been saying, Pastor Paul, and give me the information. Archbishop Duncan Williams, Prophet Gideon, Pastor Edward, Pastor Kibby, myself, a host of others. Uh, there was a team of us that have come together and that we are burdened to bring forth to America into the world, but specifically to this nation, the true keys and tools, how we effectively pray. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. Let's get into the word. Let's get into the move of God because it's more than just a word. And let's learn how to be effective in the things of the spirit. Tell to somebody and say, pray our works, pray our works. All you got to do is to pray and you will know that prayer works. All you got to do is to stop crying and stop talking and stop yelling and stop murmuring and stop complaining. And you go to the place of prayer and you will know that prayer works. You believe it, shout yes. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 5 and the 13th verse, the Bible said, Is there anyone among you troubled? Uh, is there anyone hearing the sound of my voice troubled? And is there anyone in pain? And is there anyone afflicted? Is there any among you offended or troubled or afflicted? The Bible said, Don't cry. Don't talk about it. Don't tell everybody in town that you are in pain, that you are afflicted and you are troubled or you are wounded. The Bible said, is there any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Somebody shout prayer, 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 prayer. Uh, there is something about prayer and something happens when we pray. Uh, and and. Hear me, you have not yet prayed until you pray with prayer. Aha, uh -huh. and you haven't prayed. Are you hearing me? Until you pray to the point that in prayer you pray. Are you hearing me, somebody? And you haven't prayed until you pray to the point where you pray until you pray. Because prayer is the vehicle that moves. 
and carries from eternity into time what God has prepared for those of us in time. Somebody say yes. And the Bible said, is there any among you afflicted? You see, what the enemy has succeeded to do is for us to complain about the pain, talk about the affliction, tell everybody how troubled we are and what we're going through and, and we have it. Everybody say, you don't know what I've been through and you don't know what I'm going through and you don't know what I'm going through. Stop talking about what you're going through and go into prayer and it will break and it will turn around and I dare you that he has the sound of my voice it doesn't matter where you are if you will just stop talking about it and get to the place of prayer you will see the hand of God move on your behalf somebody shout yes I feel something right now and I command the captives to be released right now. I command those who are afflicted by the enemy to be released right now. I command the captives of hope to be released right now. I command chains to break right now. I command demon spirit and principalities and powers in the name of Jesus. Lose your captives, lose your griefs, lose the sick, release our finances, lose nations, release communities, lose churches, release that pastor, release that pastor's wife, lose that boy, lose that girl in the name of Jesus. Somebody say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Sit down two minutes. The Bible said that Job was in a difficult situation for nine solid months. He lost ten of his kids. And the wife turned on him and his friends, his brothers, and his sisters. And his acquaintances turned on him. And for nine months, he did everything but prayer. He cried. He blamed God. But he didn't curse God. And said, God, why me? And why have you brought me this evil? And why have you allowed all this to happen? But the one thing that he needed to do to turn his captivity, he never did. And so let me tell you something. When you're going through affliction, because you see, prayer is the prescription given for affliction. And it doesn't matter what you do. It didn't say when you are afflicted, play Christian music. It didn't say put on praise and worship. He didn't say listening to gospel music. He said, is there any afflicted among you? Let him shut down your cell phone and put everything to a standstill. And you get to the place of the secret place of the Most High. For the Bible says, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And David said, after I have prevailed in the secret place of the Most High God and the shadow of Jehovah comes upon me, then I will say of the Lord, that is my refuge and my strength, my God, in him will I trust. Somebody lift up your hands and shout yes. Shout yes. Shout yes. What is the secret place of the most high? The Bible said when you pray, when you pray, when you pray, he says shut the door behind you. And pray unto your father who is in secret. And he will reward you openly. So the secret place of the most high is the place of prayer. Prayer is the meeting place between divinity and humanity. Prayer is the womb that carries eternal decisions judicial determination, executive decrees of eternity into time. Prayer, like the womb of a woman, 
carries a seed of a child and bears it to the earth. Prayer is that womb that brings out of the supernatural into the natural what exists for you and I. So when we don't pray, nothing moves and nothing happens. That's why John Wesley of the Methodist movement said, it seems to me that God does nothing until somebody prays. Hear me? For nine months, Job struggled with unanswered questions on his mind. For nine months, he was lonely. For nine months, everything fell apart. For nine months, he was a reproach, a proverb, and a byword. For nine months, everybody said Job was finished. For nine months, everyone wrote him off. For nine months, he was a disgrace. For nine months, he faced all kinds of mockery. And for nine months, he had a sense and a feeling of powerlessness and hopelessness. And still did nothing. Then suddenly, somebody say suddenly, suddenly. Ah, I'm not feeling you. Say suddenly, suddenly. And the Bible said, and suddenly, Job woke up from sleep. Came to himself. And realize that he has done everything. But the one thing that would turn his captivity, he has not done. Job 42. Job 42. And the 10 verse. And the 10 verse. Hallelujah. And, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job. When? When he prayed. When was his captivity turned? When he prayed. Come on, somebody talk to me. When, he, when was his captivity turned? When he prayed. I still can't hear you. When was his captivity turned? When he prayed. When was his captivity turned? When he prayed. And God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed and gave him twice. If you will pray like you ought to pray, every one of them, I see them coming back again. I said they are coming back again. They will change their mind embrace you and they are coming with silver they are coming with gold they are coming with comfort they are coming with acceptance they are coming with favor they are coming with money shout yes yes look at the 11 verse then came then, then came say then 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 came it then. was when he prayed that his captivity was turned what does that mean it means that if job had prayed earlier If he had prayed earlier, he would have got shot the affliction. So what happens when we go through affliction and we don't pray? We prolong the affliction. If you miss the Paula White Ministries Prayer Summit, now is your chance to capture it on CD or DVD. This invaluable resource is available right now for your family and your ministry. Speakers include Pastor Paula White. We should be the leading thinkers. Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. Is there any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Pastor Kibi Otu and many more. You will not only learn the true power of prayer, but also teachings on apostolic ministry, vision, the supernatural, seasons, intercession, legacy, and so much more. Call, write, or go online right now. And for your ministry gift of $35 or more, we'll rush you the Prayer Summit series on five CDs. Or for your ministry gift of $40 or more, five DVDs. Don't miss this opportunity to get these life-changing messages by some of today's leading generals in the body of Christ. Prayer works, order today. Whatever you do, you have to make the investment in yourself. This is the type of word that you have to digest over and over because it unlocks deep wells. It's deep truths. You have to get up and call that toll-free number right now. Write the P.O. box, but make sure you make the investment and you get what is necessary. I'm telling you, when you start hearing this, the fire of God's going to hit your house. The fire of God's going to hit you in the car. The fire of God's going to hit you wherever you are listening to this. Now let's get back into the word. You see, there is a moment in your life when all your brethren will turn on you. 
because no one understands what you're going through. And it's, listen, it's not everybody that can go with you where you are going. When Abraham got to the feet of Mount Moriah, he said to the men of his house, the three young men, he said, you stay here and I and the lad will go and worship and we shall return. Because there was an encounter that was going to take place on the mountain and none of those young men as faithful and as loyal as they were to Abraham, they didn't have the capacity to go to that next level. So Abraham said, you can't come with me where I'm going. You will interfere with the process. You will sabotage my experience. So you stay here. I will go with my sons. Hear me? Only sons go that far. Are you hearing me, somebody? There are places only sons can go. Servants can go. Only sons. That's why 50 sons of the prophets stood at the other side of Jordan. And it was only Elisha that could go that far with Elijah because Elisha was not a son of the prophet, but he was a son. He wasn't just a son of the prophets who were just standing as seers, but this was a different son. He was a son that served his father. He was a son that serviced his father. He was a son closer to the father and was willing and ready to pay any price for the anointing. There is a price to pay for this anointing. It doesn't just come by laying off of hands. I was in Singapore some years ago and there was such great tremendous move of the Holy Ghost. And a young man walked up to me and he said, I want some of what you have on you. And I looked at him in the eye and I said, young man, you don't know what you're asking for. I said, can you pay the price for this oil? I said, this oil provokes devils. I said, this oil attracts demons. I said, this oil will cause demonic reactions. I said, this oil will activate demons. It stirs them up and they can't hide. So they show themselves. They must manifest. I said, can you handle this thing? He said, let me pray about it. Are you hearing me, somebody? Ain't everybody that can handle this. If Job, ladies and gentlemen, if Job had prayed earlier, his captivity would have been turned. And he would have had twice as much as he had before. But that is the problem of the church. When we have crisis, the first thing we think about is a, an attorney. An attorney. Get me an attorney. Get me the best attorney in town. You need the best attorney. But demons have no respect for attorneys. Yeah. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yeah. I said the other day that thank God for those scan machines at the airport. When you're going through security, you have all those scan machines over at the airport. Those machines don't have the capacity to locate and to pick at demons. They can just locate men, but they don't have the capacity to pick up demons. Are you hearing me, somebody? It is only the believer with the Holy Ghost and that have developed the capacity of descending of spirits that can locate and tell what a demon is from a human being. Are you hearing me, somebody? Say yes. Yes. Sit down for two minutes. The Bible said that when Job prayed, God turned this captivity. Somebody here needs the turning of your captivity. There are churches that need to be turned around. There are businesses that need to be turned around. There are finances that need to be turned around. There are marriages that need to be turned around. There are sons that need to be turned around. There are daughters that need to be turned around. There are grandchildren that need to be turned around. But the turnaround is not coming until you stop doing every other thing and get into prayer and begin to pray like you've never prayed before. Oh, somebody shout prayer. Prayer. Go ahead. Then came there unto him all his brethren. All his brethren. And all his sisters. And all his sisters. And all they. 
and all day. That had been of his acquaintance before. That had been of his acquaintance before. You know, Paula, there is a moment in your life that folks who loved you before, who were for you before, will have to give up on you and turn on you. Because unless they have the spiritual capacity and revelation and ability to see the outcome of your circumstances and the outcome of what you are going through and why you are going through it, they have to turn on you. There are people that have been with you all these years, this time around, unless they step up to a higher level in the spirit, they can't come along with you. Because if you try to bring them along, they will bring you down. So you have to cut some people loose. So you can go where God is taking you. Somebody say, cut me loose. Cut me loose. Somebody say, cut me loose. Hey. I don't know who I came to talk to. And I don't know who I came to prophesy to. But I came to tell somebody, you need to be cut loose. Somebody say, cut me loose. Cut me loose. Go ahead. And all they that had been of his acquaintance before uh -huh. and did eat bread with him in his house. They came to eat bread with him again in his house. And they bemoaned him uh -huh. and comforted him. They of, comforted him. Over all of the evil that the Lord of has brought upon him. all the evil he has been through. Every man also gave him a piece of money. And they gave him money. And I see, hear me, I see new money coming into your hands. New money. Hallelujah. Somebody say new money, new money, new money. Do this. Somebody say new money is coming. New money is coming from my brethren, from my sisters, and from my past acquaintances who gave up on me. They are coming. They are coming with new money. Somebody say new money. New money. It's coming. In the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I break right now. I break right now. Financial drought. Financial drought. Say I command debt cancellation. I command debt cancellation. Say I command the cancellation. I command the cancellation. Of every debt. Of every debt. On my life. On my life. My business. My business. My finances. My finances. Say I break it now. I break it now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say I release abundance. I release abundance. Say I release plenty. I release Look at the first chapter of Jonah. There was a hope mess. And he was on board this ship. And there was crisis and storm on the ship. And everybody knew that Jonah was the problem. And he knew. He took responsibility. And he didn't do the one thing that could have changed the situation. Until the Lord prepared a great fish to swallow him up. And watch. The whole chapter, number one, he didn't pray. He didn't do anything. Look at the 17th verse. Now when the Lord had prepared a great fish to uh -huh. swallow up Jonah, uh -huh. and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days. He was in the belly of the fish for three days. And three nights. And three nights. Now, go to chapter 2. Verse 1. And verse 1. Then Jonah prayed unto when, the When Lord. did Jonah pray? When he had been in the belly of the fish for how many days? Three days and three nights, then Jonah prayed. You know, people who pray are wise and smart people. I'm just telling you. I love praying people. And I love praying mothers. And I love praying fathers. And I love praying grandfathers and praying grandmothers. Because you see, if Jonah had prayed earlier on, there would have been no need of him getting into the belly of the fish. But he didn't pray until he was in the belly of the fish. First day, no prayer. Second day, second night, no prayer. Third day, third night. Then suddenly, he came to himself and said, you know something? The old man is not going to do anything about my situation till I cry out and do something. So I better cry out if I want to come out of where I am right now. Look at what he said. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God uh -huh. out of the fish's belly uh -huh. and said, uh -huh. I cry by reason of mine affliction I unto cry. the Lord. No, 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 no. Now, watch this. Watch this. James 5.13 said what? Is there any what? Afflicted. Is there any word? Afflicted. Talk to me. Is there any word? Afflicted. Let him what? Pray. Now, Jonah said, I cried 
by the reason of what? My, My affliction. affliction. So when you are afflicted, when you are going through trials and trouble on every side, and you have storms and high water and calm rain and there is evil knocking at your door and there is tragedy and calamity and catastrophe and threaterings and arrow by day and terror by night that is the time you got to lift up prayer like you've never prayed before and cry out somebody shout prayer 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 works. That's the bottom line. And when we learn how to pray, let me give you a word right now. Don't you give up on your children. Don't give up on your destiny. Don't give up. There are people that are frustrated right now. And it's not that you don't love God. It's not that you um, wouldn't serve God with all your heart. But the enemy knows if I can keep them veiled, if it, I can keep them ignorant, unlearned, in a, in a deceptive place, bewitched with doctrines of devils, then I'll keep them defeated. But prayer works. And we are going to teach you how to effectively pray. So in the name of Jesus, I pray today, according to Ephesians 1, 17 and 18, that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened, that you may know the hope of the riches of the glory, of the inheritance of the saints, that God has great things for you. And he's going to remove the veil that when you begin to speak, mountains move, manifestation happens. You legally can overturn an arrest because the blood of Jesus is superior to anything else. I bless you in Jesus' name. If you miss the Paula White Ministries Prayer Summit, now is your chance to capture it on CD or DVD. This invaluable resource is available right now for your family and your ministry. Speakers include Pastor Paula White. We should be the leading thinkers. Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. Is there any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Pastor Kibi Otu and many more. You will not only learn the true power of prayer, but also teachings on apostolic ministry, vision, the supernatural, seasons, intercession, legacy, and so much more. Call, write, or go online right now. And for your ministry gift of $35 or more, we'll rush you the Prayer Summit series on five CDs. Or for your ministry gift of $40 or more, five DVDs. Don't miss this opportunity to get these life-changing messages by some of today's leading generals in the body of Christ. Prayer works, order today. But they Pastor Paula. Anybody who knows they've been transformed to do everything that God has determined, everything that God has decreed. You are transformed just so you can move into a house or drive a nice car. Amen. Yes. Yes. You've been transformed so that you can bring forth the glory of God and be an image bearer in the earth. Slap somebody upside their head. Say, I think she's talking to you right now. Oh.